Hi, this is Gershon Wolf and welcome to Modern Music Composition. So, in the previous video, uh, Lesson 6, I talked about C major and C minor. And I mentioned that even though they look slightly different, to, and, and they are slightly different, they are still belonging to the same abstract set class. But I haven't mentioned much about the sound properties of C major versus C minor. And so actually I thought, well, maybe what I should do is explain it in terms of frequencies. Well, it turns out that in C major, which you have, we're talking about the triad here, C, E, and G, well, each one of those notes has a fundamental frequency. That is when you hit, say, for example, um, middle C on a piano, you're going to be at a frequency of 261. All these numbers are, are in units of frequency. That's the fundamental. That's what's called the first harmonic. And that's what I've depicted here in the blue um, uh, uh, line. It's the vibration of that in terms of its frequency, 261. It doesn't end there. There are what are called overtones when a string is vibrating. And so the first overtone, which is the second harmonic, I've depicted here in red. I don't want you to get this red confused with that red. I just wanted to make these different colors. So um, all I've done here in calculating the first overtone is I've taken 261 and I've added it to 261 to get my 523. Well, it doesn't end there. If I want to get to the second overtone, which is the third harmonic, I'll take 261 and add it to 523, I'll get 784, and that is the green oscillation. There's two nodes there, one node here, and no nodes on the fundamental, except what ties it together on the end. But um, So, what I've done here is I've diagrammed out to five overtones, and for the most part, and it's going to be frequency dependent, but for the most part, um, going to the 6th, 7th, 8th, and overtone is kind of a moot point because they're very difficult to hear. As you approach each overtone, the amplitude of these waves decrease quite a bit. And so as you're reaching the 5th and 6th and 7th and, and overtone, the volume the, our actual ears can hear um, is quite low. So, I've calculated the, I, I, well, given the fundamental for, for E, I've calculated all the overtones, and likewise for G. So, there's C major in terms of all the frequencies associated um, with these notes up to the fifth overtone. There's one thing, well, there's, there's a couple things here to note. The first is some of these frequencies are the same. And that what, that's what makes um, C major unique in the sense that it actually has three pairs of frequencies that are the same. 784, th well, okay, this is 1308 and this is 1318, but plus or minus 15 hertz or so, you can't tell the difference. So they might as well be equivalent. 1568, 1569. So it has three pairs of frequencies in which are the same. That gives you a consonant pleasing sound. Now, you don't have to perturb the system much to get a, to get a different sound. And I can show you that in looking at C minor. C minor is C, E flat, and G. Both these frequencies are the same, 261 and 400, except instead of it being E, it's E flat. So we went from 329 hertz down to 311 hertz. Well, if we go and then we calculate the um, overtones for E flat, we notice one thing. And that one thing is that all of a sudden, you ha you you're going to have some differences here that aren't going to correlate with other frequencies, i.e. aren't going to match other frequencies of C and G. So here you only have one, two, three, four, five frequencies that are similar. So you have, in a sense, two sets where here you've got a, a common frequency amongst each one of the, the uh, fundamental notes 
and then you've got this 784 which appears here. That's enough, that one frequency absent is enough for you to note, <laughs> no pun intended, for you to hear um, a difference in sound when the C major chord is played versus the C minor chord. You know it when you play it on a keyboard. I mean, it's quite apparent that it's different. And for the most part, everyone's going to say C minor sounds a little bit more dark, a little bit more ominous, um, a little bit more sad. Um, that's the association between all um, minor scales and, and chords within in these minor scales. Um, so that's pretty interesting because even though at a, on an abstract level, all major and minor triads belong to the same set class, it doesn't take much between the two to make a difference in the sound. So I wanted to make that clear because um, for the most part, it's really small perturbations and, and you want to make small perturbations. You don't want to make a lot of different large jumps um, in music and certainly in creating melodies. Now, of course, it depends on what you want to do, but for the most part, most melodies are very um, smooth and they don't have a lot of jagged steps. And so what I'm just trying to prove here and kind of the take home message is it doesn't take much in terms of a change of, uh, in, in the difference between major and minor to make a change in sound that our ears can certainly hear. So that's actually it for today's lesson and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.